EDIQ is the premier tool for creating ADR queues with Pro Tools. It can load PDF shooting scripts to simplify the creation of queues and allows for the text of the lines to be styled. Once queuing is complete, EDIQ can export a variety of files, including PDFs using customizable layouts. You can design the complete look and formatting of the text, select what fields appear on each queue, and set up how queue numbers should count and what data they contain. To assist with updating queues from a writer, EDIQ can now generate the to be written PDFs with editable fields. This allows writers to enter the updated lines directly into the PDF, and this PDF can then be loaded back into EDIQ to update the master queue session. Want to know more about how EDIQ works? Then keep watching this video for a demonstration on how to create queues in a Pro Tools session. Hi, I'm Mark from Sounds and Sync, the developer of EDIQ. So just to give you some background, EDIQ can load various files, the Pro Tools session being just one of them. Let's just show you here as a tab limited text file that has come from the third party app. It contains ADRQ data, including the start time codes, line text, and the note field. Now EDIQ can load this file directly where it can create an AEF to generate a Pro Tools queue session. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a queue session yourself. So I've got a sample queue session loaded here in Pro Tools. This comes from the sample files within EDIQ. To generate that file, you just go to the help menu and you go EDIQ sample files, and that will generate a zip file uh, containing these files over here. Uh, so coming back to the sample session then, I'll show you in this video how to create these clips and set the text with the session interface window and then we'll export this as a text file ready for loading into EDIQ. So if you're new to EDIQ, uh, having a look at the session is actually a good place to start. You can see how we name these tracks. So there's specific tracks for the Prod Info track, Scene Numbers track, and then we've got separate uh, tracks, well there's two for here for Gloria, but mainly a, a separate track for each character. And then down the bottom here, we've also got a uh, department note track, so you can have several note tracks here which create their own exports. So within each track name, as you would have seen here, we've got special tags for the character ID, actor name, and then within each clip we uh, show the actual text uh, that needs to be said, and then there's special brackets to hold the fields for that queue. So to get a whole overview of how EDIQ works, you can just export this as a text file, which is the same thing as what we've got here. And then you can load that file into EDIQ, create a production called Accidents Happen. All the defaults will be set up and you can just push the export button and you'll see all the PDFs being exported containing all these queues. But so you can start your own project, I'm gonna show you how to create a session from scratch. So we'll just close this and we'll go to the EDIQ file menu and select create new template AAF. Now EDIQ can't create a Pro Tools session file anymore and now that it's 64 bit, so instead we generate an AAF. So here we enter the production name, select the timecode format, the character ID, you can specify what the maximum length is, the default being three, and here we can add clips for the Prod Info track, and this will create a clip for a single segment. Because this has got five segments, I'll actually do this manually, because when you check this, it'll actually create a mute wow file, and I'd rather show you how to do this with clip groups instead. So what we'll do in this process is actually just create an AEF with all the track names set up as we need. So we'll just click OK here, and now we'll create I'm just gonna create a couple of ADRQ tracks. So the first one I'll set up for Gloria. Defaults the ID to GLO, which we like, and this, and then I'll just create a narration track, and we can call Sin Gilbertson. Okay, and then we'll add a 
part of a note track for dialogue, just so we can see how EDQ names this track. Then we'll click OK. We'll just set the start time of the session and the sample rate bit depth we'll leave as this. And then we'll just save that to the desktop. Okay, created this folder here. We'll just open that and then we can see this AEF that's created. We'll just drop that onto Pro Tools. And I'll just create that with a two at the end because Pro Tools is going to create another folder. We'll just import all those tracks. And here we've got a prod info track, which will set up the scene numbers track and two character tracks and a department note track. Now I'm just going to close this. So here's the uh, session we just created in uh, Pro Tools. I'm just going to plop that session file back in the original folder that we generated from AEF. I can delete the AEF. And so now we've got a session file within a folder, which is what we want. And next, I'll just go to one hour. And I'm just going to create a clip eight seconds long. And then I can go uh, option Apple G to create a clip group. And in this, I'm going to just set the production name. And this is what Edilo is going to use each time you load the session into EDQ. And it'll just automatically then load up all the settings for this production. Then what I'm going to do, uh, I'm just pushing the slash key here on the numeric keypad to set length. I'm just going to go select a two minute duration. And I'll set this up for real one. So let's put R1 in square brackets and in curly brackets go version. I'm just going to go 2B. Now this could be episode 101, in which case you would put an app 101. Uh, see the tag list or the EDQ user guide for the different types of segment names. So I'll change that back to real one. Now this prod info track in segment clips is new to version three. And this allows you to queue multiple episodes or reels in the one queue session, while still allowing you to set individual episode or reel numbers. So I must be able to do a quicker way than this. Just copy the text of the first, paste that into the second. So I'll go reel two, version two B. Now we'll just speed through the video showing the creation of these segment clips here. Just note that you do need to create a new clip group for each segment rather than just copy the first clip group and paste it to each real start point. We need to do this because when you update the name of a clip group, any copies of it will also show the updated name. The reason I'm creating these two minutes long is it's kind of big enough to see when you're zoomed out. Uh, but uh, if you create them longer than two minutes, what's going to happen is when you load this into EDQ and you export all these queues as an AEF, EDQ will generate a WAV file that's longer than the longest clip. So that's why I recommend to keep these down to kind of two minutes long. So now what I'm going to do is just uh, import a guide track. I've got a dummy guide track here I can just dump on. Just spot that to timestamp. And so we can show you how to create a queue. So a couple of things I wanted to show you with the track names before we create any clips. The scene numbers track contains clips where each clip starts at a scene change point, And that's used to automatically set the scene number for any queues that you create within that scene. You can actually generate this automatically using Ediload, where it can load a picture EDL and the PDF shooting script. And so it'll create a clip with the scene number and the description. And then you can load this into this session 
and have your scene numbers automatically set for you. And so this is where we set up Gloria and the ID and the actor names, which are now in the correct brackets. Now, if you want to set a default record time for this actor, now this won't make a lot of sense to you if you haven't used EDIQ before, but in the next video where we load up this data, um, you'll be able to set a record time for this actor. So if you want to have that default to a particular value, you can set that in less than and greater brackets. So we can set a four here, which would set a record time for a queue to four. Or if we're going to have BVOX queues, we can set that a four slash one, and then we'll set four minutes per queue for the queue and one minute per queue for the BVOX queues. So what I'm going to do now is open up the session interface window. And we do that by uh, either clicking this button here, or you can select um, Apple Equals or just select this menu item. Now we don't have any production set up on this machine yet, so we're just going to call this Accidents Happen. Now we want to name this exactly the same as what we set up in the first clip here. And here we're going to tell also what our maximum uh, character or department ID length is. And here we can set up if we want our BVOX queues to be set automatically from the text within the line. I'll just leave this unchecked so we can set it manually. Now here we confirm the reason numbers or reason tags that we're going to use for this production. Uh, these are the defaults. If you're creating a production uh, for a queue session that was started in EDIQ version 2 and you use the default reasons in that, you'd want to click the load legacy defaults, which will set up reasons 1 to 9 the same as what EDIQ version 2 was. But uh, for this one, we'll use the new version 3 defaults. And here we have the session interface window. We can close the main window of EDIQ. And this is where we enter all the data that needs to go into the clips. So for starters, I'll just import the shooting script here that came with the sample files, drop this PDF onto the window. And it's just asking what's the first page uh, of the text contained within the script. Now here you can see all the character lines and uh, scene descriptions of the PDF. You can uh, filter this list by selecting a particular uh, character. And here you can search for particular words in the script. Once you've found it, you can click the uh, clear button here. And it'll show you all the lines in the script selected on the one that you found. So use the script window here to find lines in the show that you need to queue. Uh, say we need to queue this line here, we just double click it and it appears up the top here ready for you to amend. Um, if you've got a second line or you want, there's two lines that you need to queue together in succession, you can double click the first, hold shift and double click the second and then both of them appear up here in the line field. Uh, if you go to this uh, menu here, you can change the case of how text is extracted out of the PDF and whether or not text is shown that's between uh, brackets and such like. So now I'll show you how to create a ADR queue in a Pro Tools session. Well, this is actually just a dummy guide track I've got and I've just plopped a bit of myself here at 10 minutes just so I can demo this to you. I heard that. So say you find that in your guide. I heard that. And you want to queue that. I can enter that line into the script and hey presto, here we've found it in the script. Gloria says it here. So we can then double click that to load that line into the line field. Now we just uh, select noise for the reason and we'll go through the rest of these parameters shortly. Uh, we'll just show you how to create this clip for starters. So we can just hold down the control key and find where it starts. Hold down shift to control, find the end. And then we just click down to the appropriate character track and create a clip group. 
with option command G. Then we come back to uh, the session interface window and we then click set clip or press Apple S to set. So now we can see how it load has set the name with the line. Let's put the reason to tag in and also the T TBW tag because this was checked. So next I just wanted to show you if say you had to queue all the lines for this character Gloria for scene 32, we could just select Gloria, um, enter 32, and here we've got three lines. Now the quickest way to create these queues would be to find the start and end points here, and we'll just imagine that line started and ended there. Just create a clip group here, create another clip group here. And rather than clicking Apple S, we press Alt Apple S to set the current clip and select the next. So then EDQ has set the first clip name. We can then double click the second line. We can click the focus button here, or we can click Apple F. We can then press spacebar and Pro Tools to hear the line. Obviously, if there was a line there, you could hear it. Uh, update the line as you need here. And then once it's all set, we can just click Alt Apple S, set that line. We can double click the next. Apple F to bring Pro Tools to the front. We can click Space, hear the line, amend the line as required. And then because it's the last one, we just click Apple S to send that. So that's a quick way to be able to queue multiple queues for the same scene by displaying them in the script down here below, lifting them up and plopping them into the clip names. So now I'll just explain what all these other fields are for. Um, if you don't have a scene numbers track, you can enter the scene number in here. Uh, by the way, you can see, uh, I'll just make this a lot, uh, text a lot smaller, and then we can see these tags appear down here in the output field. Uh, the queue status, you can set a status like um, needs direct a check or it can be used for any other type of information that's relatively small this can be sorted upon when you load this data into EDQ so it's just an extra field that can be used outside of the main note field here you can set a priority if you want to be able to have uh, several queues uh, that have a higher priority than another or you can sort uh, queues by priority or filter queues so you only get queues with a priority five um, the queue number field here is used uh, if you wish to use custom queue numbers. That is, if you want to set the counter portion of a queue number um, so that each queue will always have the same number, uh, even if you later on insert or delete queues, uh, what you want to do here is um, actually set the queue number and uh, then each time you set a clip, with this information, that number will increment, and that way you'll have a unique number for every clip in the production. The new reason field here is uh, enabled when you select new reason at the bottom here, and it just allows you to set a special reason. Uh, if it's not in this list as such, um, you can just add it here. Safety only was added to flag if a queue is required only as a safety, that is, if the production audio can't be cleaned up with noise reduction and filtering, etc., in the mix, then this queue is required to replace the production audio. The editable checkbox here is used in conjunction with the PDF layouts or more the actual band designer. So when you select the option to only have tagged queues editable, this control is then used to select which queues can be edited for that particular field. The append control here is used to append the text of this particular clip to a previous, and I'll show you that shortly. The supplementary checkbox here is used to create a supplementary queue, which I'll also show you. Also check out the settings options here. You can set the size of the text and also the way that the text is updated here. And you can also disable the spell checking here if you want, which uses the built-in Mac OS or Windows operating system spell checker. So just showing you how this append tag works. If I make this, I uh, just loaded this twice, you'll see down here, you get this red line showing that um, 
too many characters are actually in this field. And that is because a Pro Tools clip name can actually only hold 242 or slightly more characters. So to get around this, to queue lines that are longer than 242 characters, we can actually split a clip into two. And I'll just click that, the B key here. And what we'll do is I'll just cut, say, this chunk to the clipboard. We can send this. I'll just set the right values here. We won't have a pend on the first clip. I'll just set this as um, noise. I'll just get rid of the scene number. So the only take here is the R2 for the noise. I'll just send that to Pro Tools. And then what we do is I'll just paste the second part of that and click Append and then send that to Pro Tools. And what this append tag does, you can see here in the clip name, is when this is loaded into EDIQ, it'll append these two clips together and create a single queue. So lastly, I'm just gonna show you how these supplementary queues work. In order to uh, do that, I'm just gonna duplicate this track for Gloria. And uh, I'll just insert that after. And what we want here is the same track name as the main track, the duplicate, we just want a .dup1. So I'm just showing you this in case you want to change the track name of the main track, you also have to make the same change to the duplicate. So on this duplicate track, what we can do is create a supplementary queue, and that's used for, say, if you've got a long line with a pause and you want an additional uh, visual cue to the actor without splitting the cue into two separate cues, you can create a supplementary cue. And we just create another clip group on the dupe track. And then we just click supplementary and send that. And that just creates a clip with this SUP in square brackets. And that is exported in MIDI files for Ediprompt and can also be shown in PDFs in the supplementary locators uh, data field. So just before I close this session, I just remembered I need to show you how you can style text of the line field and the note field and uh, department note. So I'll just select this clip here. We can uh, press Apple G to get, or we can click the get clip uh, button here. And now with EDIQ version three, we can select a range of text and make it bold, italic, uh, underlined. Uh, we can also set a different color. So when I come back to the sample session, I can actually, I'll just load up one of the clips. And so all the styling information is contained within these tags here. And in this styling here, just so you can see how it looks in the PDFs that are exported from MediQ, it looks like this on the actor PDF, because in the Band Designer, the text is centered and all of the text is bold. And here is the director PDF. As this text is aligned left, it looks more like it is shown in the session interface window. So coming back to the session then, we can see that we've got a dupe track here for Gloria and that was actually used um, for a supplementary queue here for this long line. Uh, for the, to cue the actor in for the second part of the line. And uh, the only other things I want to show you here is we've got uh, multiple loop group tracks here. So we've got the first one here and the duplicates. And of course that allows you to create multiple cues, uh, say a general cue on the first one and specifics on the second one or you could create separate character tracks for a specific loop group and a general loop group. The last track here is our department note track, which contains our dialogue notes. Department notes are handy for creating notes for various editors or for Foley records. The clips are created in the same way as ADR cues, but to set the clip names, you use the department note tab here in the session interface window. So once your session is complete, all you need to do is go file export session info as text. We can leave this all set up as the default settings, uh, but we don't actually need this data from the first 
uh, four checkboxes so we can uncheck them to make a smaller file. Now you can create queue sessions in footages and even have multiple reels in the one session, in which case you would still create each reel on the hour. But when you go to export this text file, you would set the footage counter as zero at the start of the first reel or at one hour. So here you set uh, to export timecode or footages. And here normally, certainly for English and Western European languages, you can leave this set as text. If you have in your session Asian or any quirky characters in your text, you'll need to export this as UTF-8. And then when you go to load this text file into EDQ, you then need to set EDQ to load as UTF-8 as well. And then those characters will come across correctly. But here we're just going to select the default text. And we're just going to save that next to the session. And then we're ready to load this into EDQ. So this completes the video on how to create a queue session with EDQ. If you need further clarification on anything shown here, please check out the EDQ user guide, which can be saved from the help menu. See the next videos for a demonstration on how to load queue data into EDQ, how the EDQ settings can customize your queue data, and how to export the PDF scripts and additional files that it can generate. Thanks for watching this video. Now, if you'd like to try out EDQ for yourself, either on Mac OS or Windows, just head to the download page of the website. Once the app is installed, just click Try to activate a trial license.